Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service. We, we have started with our sermon series towards a summer of holiness. We started that last week, and so today we're going to tackle the first topic of that sermon series, which is shame. Um, and so hopeful, hopefully we can, from the sermon, get some uh, guidance as to how to deal with with shame and how, how God helps us through this um, time of winter so that we may indeed come to, to summer. Um, for we said last week that our lives are, are characterized by seasons. Um, it's kind of written into our DNA, it seems. And so we move from one season to the next. And if we find ourselves in a season in which shame is, is most prominent. We need to move out of that season into a, a different season where life is a little bit better. Uh, let's call it summer. Summer seems to be a much better season than winter, at least for, for people like myself. Um, so that's what, what today is about. But before we get there, I'm going to invite our worship team to lead us to a time of praise and thanksgiving. Let's stand as we sing together.
thank you that you do not deal with me as my sins deserve. I thank you that you have sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sin and that I am forgiven. I believe that I have been forgiven and I release my shame to you. I choose to walk in freedom that Jesus Christ died to give me. In Jesus' name, amen. So friends, again, can I say welcome to our service. It's really good to have you all here with us today. Um, it is cold. This church is cold. Hopefully your hearts are warm. Uh, as someone once said, we are the frozen chosen. So... <laughs> Friends, we're going to do the flower messages. Uh, then I'm just going to name those people that are on our prayer list for this week. Um, after which we will do our readings and the message for today. So our first flower message to Pat. Uh, thank you for 57 amazing years. Love from Terry. They were at the early service and we congratulated them. But we say, well done, Terry. <laughs> and Pat. And then, friends, our second one. Um, Aubrey, are you here? To the Sibert, uh, from the Sibert family. I let five years ago death took you from us far too young. You will always be our unsung hero, a loving wife, Mother and grandmother, we miss you, the Sibbert family. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you during this time. Thank you for sharing this with us so we can be with you. So those are our two flower messages for today. And then we keep the following people in our prayers uh, for this week. Tommy Lee, uh, Krista Pretorius, Bianca Ferry and family. Tommy Lee, is, uh, we pray for healing uh, for Bianca, her cousin's newborn baby who needs heart surgery. So we pray for that family. For Ansi uh, Mangelsdorf, uh, who's not well at all, we pray for her. And for Ronelle, her daughter, who's looking after her, we pray for strength for Ronelle. And then for uh, Susan Duran. Uh, is Susan here? I'm not sure. Her, her sister Ansi passed away. And so our thoughts and our prayers are with Susan and her family. 
Friends, can I invite you to those who are watching via our live stream, uh, if you could um, uh, just give us an indication or say, you know, a thumbs up. Um, and also tell us uh, where you're from, where you are watching from, so that we can connect with you in that way. And those who are watching, that they can connect with one another. Okay, friends, uh, so we will be going to our Bible readings and then our, our message for today or our sermon. Our first reading comes to us from Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, just that one verse. As we said earlier on, we're in our sermon series uh, towards a summer of holiness. I don't know why it is so. Maybe for some people winter is actually a good time. Um, but, but often winter is likened to, to, to going through a difficult time. And so we address some of, or we're trying to address some of the issues that may keep us feel, feeling as though we are in winter. And we need to move to a different season uh, where, where life is unburdened, as it were, from that particular issue. And so today we're going to look at shame. Shame may be one of those issues that may keep some of us in winter, in a not-too-good season. And so that's what, what today is about. Um, and we're moving from that to a summer to a better place, out of our shame, um, as we'll see in the sermon, uh, by, first of all, I think, naming or confessing where we are uh, currently. If we, we're in a place of shame, that that is indeed where we are. So Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 says the following, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Thanks be to God for God's word. And then we turn to our second reading, 1 John. Uh, it's the three letters of John right at the back of the Bible. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. Yes, there they are. Verse 1 John chapter 1. Verses 1 to 9. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ, and we write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you. God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And the focus for me here is uh, on those last few words. Purify us from all unrighteousness. In other words, making us a people who, who are righteous or who are right with God. Um, kind of connecting again with um, having been made in the image of God. And that's what I want to, to explore a little bit today as we look at, 
at how we deal with shame. Now, sometimes when you go to children's church or Sunday school on the walls, you will see they've put up um, notices and uh, signs and all kinds of stuff. Um, and I once uh, saw this um, particular uh, message. I can't remember the first part of this, but the second part said, God made no junk. God made no junk. Um, I think we get the message. Uh, God made no junk. So in focusing on our shame, or how we deal with shame, I want us to, to keep in mind that picture. God made no junk. Now shame, um, I tried to, to read up a little bit about what it is. And it seems to me as though there are different kinds of shame. And there are different reasons for, for being shamed or for experiencing shame. But one thing they all have in common is this. Is that shame can be seen or, uh, or defined as those painful feelings that we may experience uh, believing that we are not good enough. Shame is when you say to yourself, I am a mistake. Whatever the cause, whatever may have brought that about, whatever the reason for saying that about yourself. Sometimes we may say, I made a mistake. But shame says, I am a mistake. I am not good enough. I don't deserve to be here. Those painful and very deep feelings, when we believe that about ourselves, because to believe that about ourselves come, it comes with those painful, hurtful feelings when we say, I am a mistake. Shame, in that sense, has power over us. So we have to undo, as it were, that power so that we can leave behind the season of shame that we may find ourselves in. Move to a different season um, which may be better or having undone shame in our lives. Now, when we go to that passage, the highlight for me in, in what we have read today is those last few words. Because of all of what has been said, this is who we are. We have been made right with God. We are okay with God. We are those who are now righteous. I think that shame removes us from ourself. Let me put it this way. Shame messes with our identity. When we feel shame, when we experience shame, it messes with who we really are with our identity. So much so that shame defines us. And that's why it's so easy to then say, I am a mistake. Because it defines who we are. It messes with our identity. But to be righteous and to focus on being righteous is to be restored to our identity in Jesus. You know, shame may be part of our life history, our life story. Shame may be part of our experiences, uh, of our experience as a, a human being. Uh, from time to time, we may experience these painful feelings, believing that we are in fact a mistake, um, and so on. But shame does not need 
to define who we are. It may be part of our experience, part of our life story, part of the seasons we may, be, we may go through, but it need not define us. Something else defines us. Someone else defines who we are. For we share in Jesus' righteousness. Or perhaps we can say in the light that Jesus is, as opposed to the darkness. This is what defines us. As those who live in the light, as those who belong to the light, as those who have the light, that is Jesus. You know, my, my car is in for repairs, and so I'm driving around with a 22-year-old Datsun Bucky that is falling apart. I'm never sure whether I, where, if I'm going to make my destination or not. It's uh, rusted through in certain parts. You can't go faster than about 40 or 50 because before it starts shaking. And it's, so I'm, I'm driving this bucky. And, and as I'm driving, I see all these other cars passing me by. New cars. Expensive cars. And I say to myself, Fawn, you're not this bucky. You are more than this bucky. <laughs> My bucky, 22 years old, does not define who I am. So I'm okay with driving my bucky because I'm more than my bucky. <laughs> I'm okay with driving around with my bucky. And so even though we may experience shame, let it be okay. Let it be okay because it doesn't define who we are. We are more than our shame. God made no junk. God made people who are restored to who they are made, who they are, having been made in the image of God. Jesus, the light giver. Jesus, the identity giver. Jesus, who says who we are. And that, I think, is what we embrace as we struggle with shame or what the place we need to come to, the summer that we need to come to so that we can undo our shame. So here are some practical steps, things we can do to begin to deal with our shame, with those feelings, very painful, deep feelings that may force us to say to ourselves, I am a mistake. So we can begin to deal with those feelings and those beliefs about ourselves. And the first thing we need to do is to become aware of our shame. Become aware of it. Acknowledge it, in other words. Name it. Name it. Say, the fact that I'm saying about myself I am a mistake is because there is shame. Someone shamed me. It comes from somewhere. But this is what is happening in my life. Pinpoint the cause of, of the shame. Where does it come from? What makes me say this about myself? What makes me feel as though I am worth nothing? Where does it come from? Where? It must come from somewhere, because I'm not that. Become aware of how we talk about ourselves. How do you... How do you talk about yourself? You know, sometimes 
in group work. So you would say to people, write down 10 wrong things, bad things about yourself, things you don't like about yourself. And they can easily find 10 things. Then you ask them to write down 10 good things about themselves. And it's like, ish, I can find maybe two. Why is that? Why is that? <laughs> Become aware of how we, we speak about ourselves. And have compassion for yourself. You know, so often in churches, almost all the sermons ask us to, to have compassion for others. But today, our focus is having compassion for ourselves. Be gentle with yourself. I always say to people, be gentle with yourself. Sometimes we're so good at being gentle with others, but so hard on ourselves. Friends, I've discovered, and I want to write a book, I'm going to make a lot of money. I've discovered the greatest secret of the universe. All people make mistakes. I don't know if you've noticed that. Maybe you haven't yet. Well, here it is today, revealed. The greatest secret in this universe. All people make mistakes. All people. No one is perfect. All people. Be gentle with yourself. Have compassion for yourself. Friends, in Jesus we are more than our shame. We are made in the image of God. And that image speaks about us sharing in the righteousness that Jesus is. In that place where we are okay with God, where God calls us God's beloved, where God calls us God's children, God's people, God made no junk. And so to overcome our shame, if we do those practical steps, if we come and we reclaim, rebirth into, restored our identity as people of, um, people of the light, we leave the darkness. And the darkness in shame is secrecy. It's the secrecy that has the power when we experience shame. When we keep it or try to keep it away from God and everybody else, as long as it is a secret, it has power over us. To leave shame behind is to leave behind the secrecy. <laughs> to bring it into the light. That is what cancels the power of secrecy, is to bring it to the light, to confess it, to say to God, my life now is filled with shame. And maybe I'm struggling to, to know where it comes from, what kind of shame it is, but I know how I talk about myself, how I see myself. And it's a sign that there is shame in my life. Confess it. Confess it. You know, my mind works in wonderful ways. So after the service, I'll be in my little box there. So all of you can come for confession. <laughs> Some of you may, may stay here for quite a while. Can I then confess at the end of that to all of you? <laughs> 
And so, friends, I need to end. Um, and I guess maybe the first part of that, that postcard or that message in that Sunday school wall uh, on the wall, uh, God made no junk. Maybe the first part was because we are made in God's image. Or maybe it said something about us being special or us being loved by God. I don't know. I just can't remember. Um, maybe I'll, I'll see it again sometime. I don't know. Maybe I should ask Natalie. Maybe she will know uh, what it is about. But God made no junk. Let us leave behind our, our secret places where we hide from God and people who we are and what we are about. Because those things that are in secret do not define who we are. What is in the light, that's what defines who we are. And that light is Jesus. And that's who we are. That's who we are. We are people living in his light. And he shines in us and through us. Let's leave behind shame. Let's leave behind this winter time and embrace a different season, unburdened, where shame is left behind. No more secrets about us. For God knows us. God made no junk. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. And so, gracious God, we thank you that as you invite us to, in the midst of our winters, to begin to see that summer is coming, you invite us today to, in the midst of our shame, to know that we can leave this behind that your light shines into our lives and will reveal and bring to the open all that which keeps us from, from, from moving to a different season, a season in which we, we feel alive again because we have been unburdened, we have left behind all that stuff that keeps us out of the light. And so we thank you today that as we move forward, your spirit will continue to move with us and lead us to this new season. And so we thank you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand as we sing together.
Yeah.